Hey, what's up guys? Noah here for Adafruit. This week, I got a really cool cosplay prop for you. This is Lyran Stormflower from the anime web series Ruby. And in the front of the barrel, I have a NeoPixel. And behind the trigger, I have a push button. So when I squeeze the trigger, I get this really nice NeoPixel animation. Inside the magazine, I actually have an Adafruit trinket and a 500 milliamp LiPo battery. It's a really good spot for the electronics. Of course, this entire prop is 3D printed. So in this project video, I wanna share with you guys how you can adapt the circuit and Arduino code for your cosplay props. So, let's get started. So the electronics that I use in this project are great for cosplay weapons or really anything that needs to flash when you press a button. For this project, we'll use an Adafruit trinket, a NeoPixel, a push button, JST breakout, and battery. The NeoPixel needs three connections for power, ground, and data. The push button will be tied to ground and a second pin on the Adafruit trinket. The battery plugs into the JST breakout and the power and ground will connect to the Adafruit trinket. In the Arduino sketch, we'll import the NeoPixel library, define the pins and number of pixels. We'll also create the NeoPixel object. In the setup, we'll initiate the NeoPixel and set the button pin as a pull-up input. Then in the loop, we'll say if the button is set low, then run the animation function. Otherwise, turn off the NeoPixel. The animation function itself uses linear interpolation to fade RGB color values in a gradient over a period of time. It's easy to change the colors in the gradient, and you can also scale the animation by increasing the number of pixels. Be sure to check out the tutorial to get the full code and a better understanding of how it all works. I designed the Stormflower in Fusion 360. I built a prop using components and made sure to create channels so that I could run the wires through the various parts. I also separated them into pieces so that I wouldn't need any support material when 3D printing. I 3D printed all of the pieces on a Sigma 3D printer from BCN 3D. There's a total of 24 pieces, which sounds like a lot of 3D printing, but it definitely wasn't enough to burn through a whole spool. I used a 20% infill for all of the parts, and I probably only used about 10% of the spool. I heated the glass bed up to 65C, and I was extruding at around 220C, which is a bit hot, but that helps keep the flow consistent. It's also worth noting that I used 1.75 filament, which works really well in the Sigma 3D printer, even though it's only supposed to run 2.85 filament. So here's all the pieces. I didn't do any post-processing, but you definitely could sand them down if you want a really smooth finish. I started by gluing the main pieces of the blade together using E6000, which is a silicone-based adhesive. Then I glued the middle piece of the blade onto the main base of the blade. I made sure to use clamps to hold the pieces together, and I let the E6000 cure for about an hour. Then I did a quick dry fit and measured wires for the NeoPixel. I'll need three wires to connect to the NeoPixel. These will be for power, data, and ground. I connected these wires to the three pads on the bottom of the NeoPixel. Then I added some pieces of heat shrink tubing to the wires just to keep them bundled together. Next, I can get started on wiring up the Adafruit trinket. On the bottom of the board are two pads for power and ground. I tinned those up and connected two wires. Then I soldered the power connection from the trinket to the SW pin on the JST breakout and then ground to ground. Now I can plug in the LiPo battery and flip the switch to test out the circuit. Now onto the button, I fitted it into the handle so that I can measure the lengths of wires that I'll need. I only need two wires, one for each leg. Then I'll tin them up and solder them to the button. Once again, I used heat shrink tubing to keep the wires together. Now with the button and the NeoPixel wired up, I can connect them to the trinket. I tied the ground wires from the button and the NeoPixel together and fitted them into the ground pin on the trinket and soldered them in place. Then connected the second wire from the button to pin number two on the trinket. For the NeoPixel, the wire for power will go into the battery pin. And the last connection is the data from the NeoPixel, which will go into pin number zero on the trinket. With all the connections wired up, I can do a final test of the circuit to make sure everything is working. After that, I can start mounting all the pieces together. I'll start by inserting the NeoPixel through the channel in the back of the barrel and out the other end. 
Then I'll thread it through the front barrel piece and pull the NeoPixel through. Once it's out the other end, I can connect both of the barrel pieces together. Now I can mount the NeoPixel to the face of the barrel by pressing it in until it clicks into place. Now I can gather the main pieces together like the handle, the trigger guard, and trigger. The keys from the trigger will fit into the slots on the trigger guard and the keys from the guard will go into the handle. The push button then fits into the channel behind the trigger. I fitted the wires into the channel and placed the second half of the handle on top and fastened some machine screws to secure the pieces together. Now I can fit the barrel pieces onto the handles. Each piece has a key and a slot, so I'll just press the pieces together until they click into place. The Adafruit Trinket, JST Breakout, and Battery all fit inside of the magazine, so I carefully slid them in and inserted the magazine into the bottom of the handle. Then I just need to make sure that the trigger can actuate the push button. Last thing to do is to fit the blade into the front of the barrel. The key from the blade goes into the trigger guard and the blade itself fits underneath the barrel. And that's it for the build. I think this is a really awesome way to get triggered lighting effects, especially for cosplay props. But this would also work really well for all sorts of costumes. So I hope you check out the tutorial for this project. Remember it is linked down below. I also hope this inspires you to start thinking about electronics for your cosplay props because it really adds that extra dimension. Thank you guys so much for watching. Don't forget to subscribe for more projects every week. But until then, I'll see you next time.